This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Rappaport to the Rescue with award-winning animal advocate Jill Rappaport. Hi, welcome to Rappaport to the Rescue. I'm Jill Rappaport celebrating a very special day. This is the one and only Betty White's 100th birthday. As you know, we lost the legend two weeks ago and I was so upset she was truly an icon, the most incredible person. I was fortunate enough to get to meet her and work with her, and I'll explain that in a minute. And I am joined now by the one and only wonderful trainer, Bill Berloni, who has his own personal story with Betty. We're the lucky ones, Bill. Tell us about how you got to meet Betty. Back in 2015, the Discovery Channel reached out to produce a reality show about Dorothy and I and our home and our rescue efforts called From Wags to Riches with Bill Berloni. And when we were edited and ready to hit the air, they they informed me that Betty White was going to be the spokesperson and do the commercials and all that stuff. And we were blown away that, you know, we had Betty White talking about our show. And um, about two months before air, we went out to LA, Dorothy and I, for a press junket. And we actually got to meet Betty in person. And it was one of the most amazing meetings we've ever had. And you know, Bill, we've been fortunate enough to meet so many well-known, famous, acclaimed people. And sometimes, hopefully, they live up to the expectations. But when somebody's a true legend, a true icon, it's hard to live up to those great expectations. And yet Betty White did. I know. You know, so many celebrities and people get behind causes just for publicity. She has been walking the walk since she was a child. You know, that just was a part of who she was. And carried that into her professional career to help animals all over the world. I mean, that's that's really true love. That's really a dedication that not many people have. Yeah, she was one of the original animal advocates, one of the true pioneers decades ago, along with Doris Day and Bob Barker. And I have to tell you, as far as my story goes, it was back in 2015. And at the time, I was doing a show, Best in Shelter with Jill Rappaport, and it was focused on the underdogs of the shelter world. We had a section sizzling seniors, and we had special needs, and then we had pits putting on the Ritz for the pit bulls. And Betty wanted to be and offered to be the face of the sizzling senior section and said, yes, I'll do the interview. And it was unbelievable. We brought in the dogs from Helen Woodward and they were all sizzling seniors, all girls. We named them the golden girls. And she had such a great sense of humor. She walked in, she saw them all lined up in the bed. She says, I know that one's mine. It's got its legs crossed. She had wonderful energy. And you know, I've been fortunate enough, like you, Bill, to meet so many incredible people. I kept pinching myself during that interview because I have loved her for so many years and to be able to sit with her. And I, she didn't even realize what she was, her legend. She is and was, I have to remind myself to say was, which is so sad, but the most down to earth did not even think of herself in terms of a star. She was the most charming, wonderful person. You felt like she was a relative. She was family, right? Something you said about your story, she wanted to be a part of this for the seniors, you know, and that's so amazing about her because when we met her, my first thing was, you know, we're really honored to have you as our spokesperson. She went, oh, I've, I've read your story. I know who you are. And I mean, we were just trainers out here, in, you know, on the East Coast. And she goes, you guys do good work. So of course, I'm going to help you. You know, I mean, it was that sort of altruism that if there was any way that she could help animals, she would be there. And I don't want to embarrass the founder of Pet Life Radio, who's working the control boards right now. I'm looking at him, Mark, don't kill me. But our own Mark Winter, head of Pet Life Radio, had his own wonderful personal encounter with Betty White. Sorry about this, Mark, but come on, you got to tell us about this. Well, that's okay. Well, Betty was on Pet Life Radio four times on four different shows. And the first time she was on was in 2009 and there was no Zoom or anything back then. So she was on the phone. So I didn't get to meet her, you know, face to face, but I did speak to her a few times. She was really nice, very down to earth and friendly, but she also had that sense of humor that we all know. So she was a really fun guest. She sent me her book that she wrote with her friend, Tom Sullivan. It's called Together, and she signed it to me. 
And it says to Mark and Bailey, who was my dog at the time. You just happen to have the book there, right, Mark? <laughs> I happen to have the book right here. It says many thanks and happy new year, Betty White and Pontiac. So she always included her dog and our dogs and everything that she uh, sent. So she was very wow. sweet. She said to me, she goes, thank you for being a friend, which, of course, we all know was from Golden Girls. So that was really awesome. Oh, isn't that wonderful? And I bet that book, that inscription is one of your most important and cherished. Oh, yeah, I love that. Yeah, I remember we talked about Pontiac, her golden retriever. I actually brought her out, schlepped her out, one of my big dog beds I had designed at the time for Pendleton. And I said, this is for Pontiac. And I also brought her one of my books. I've written four books, but the one with Robert Redford on the cover, People We Know Horses They Love, because if you knew anything about Betty White, like me, she had the biggest crush on Robert Redford. So we were joking about that. And I said, who doesn't love Hubble? I even named my horse Sundance. She was just the most wonderful person. And to think that she would have been 100 years old today. And you know, Bill, I am doing the most unbelievable initiative with ARF, the Animal Rescue Fund out here in the Hamptons. And we're going to be having on Scott Howe in just a few minutes, but I wanted to tell you about it. ARF, which is the local beloved rescue out here, and I'm sure you know that, Bill, and decided to do the most incredible thing. ARF is going to waive all of the adoption fees for every one of their seniors in the shelter, dogs and cats, for 100 days. Do you believe that? That's three and a half months. And this is to honor Betty White. And I can only think up in heaven that she must have the biggest smile on her face. Oh my goodness, that's a brilliant idea. And uh, if we had only thought about it when she was alive, I'm sure oh, yeah. she would have been the first one to get everybody involved in something like that. But that's glorious. That's wonderful. And like you say, there isn't a better tribute to her than getting animals adopted in her name. And, you know, she really paved the way. You know, I'm a reporter, you're a trainer, but it doesn't matter. She paved the way for all animal advocates, didn't she? Yes, she would get behind any animal cause, you know, uh, endangered species, rescued elephants. I mean, whatever it was, if there was a way that she could help any animal, she would. I mean, obviously, the, the smaller animals were easier for her to get in touch with, but a true, you know, conservationist. Yes, amazing. Yep. And she really walked the walk and walked the talk. She was incredible. In fact, it, it was so interesting because her publicist, who I've gotten to know, and a wonderful person, Jeff Witches, he'd been with Betty for years. And I remember when I first heard the news, it was surreal to me. And you know, you think to yourself, wow, if I can get to 99. But we all thought Betty would live forever. We just couldn't even imagine a world without Betty White. And that was what Jeff said in his statement. He said, I knew she was going to be 100, but I always thought she'd be here forever. And we would talk about her when he granted me the interview for my show. And I would always say, what is it like working with her after all these decades? And he just said, heaven, she is the most wonderful human being. And he made sure even in her requests, he got out there that, you know, please make donations to animal charities. And of course, we know about the Betty White Challenge that's been started. And now ARF and I are doing this wonderful initiative. And I think she would be so happy. I mean, she knew how much she was loved when she was alive. But boy, the world cried when we lost her, but we want to honor her forever. Yep. You know, and I think the reason we wanted her to live forever was that she was a role model. Somebody, even people our age could still look up to. Because if she can do it at that age, then it inspired us to continue to want to do that and to follow in her footsteps and to back whatever she was backing, you know, and because uh, you, you felt the world was a little safer for animals when, when Betty was there. Well, and Bill, you really have carried on her legacy because you have made it your life's mission, forfeiting a lot of big jobs, costing you a lot of money in your career to make sure that the animals, the utmost important thing to you is their safety. And you've been on so many major projects. The last time we spoke, you were the star of the show because you were involved with Annie. Your wonderful dog was the four-legged star. And I've been seeing your beautiful English bulldog every week. On, and just like that, I keep wanting to refer to it as Sex in the City. You've been so busy. And just before we get to our next guest, Scott Howe from ARP, I'd love to just catch up with you for a few minutes. Any star news with pets? Tell us. 
Well, we had a very busy January lined up. We had five big projects that we were working on. We were going to work on Sesame Street, a movie called Eileen starring Anne Hathaway, another movie called Ada, a series called Jigsaw, and another one for Disney. And they've all been postponed because of the recent COVID spike in New York City. Right. So right now, my trainers, my animals are waiting for the world to come back together, at least in the filming world, so that we can get back to work. But fortunately, people need entertainment in these times. And so in the filming industry, it's, it's going really well. But COVID, this new surge has overwhelmed the casts and the crews. And so everybody's been postponing for at least a month. Well, at least you're getting the gigs. I remember when we first started this podcast, it was a really scary time for you. There was no work. And you have how many mouths now to feed? Well, we're still up around 40. And that's in their home. For our listeners, picture 40 animals living under a very beautiful roof farm, but still a lot of animals to feed and take care of. And they're all stars. And I love the English bulldog in And Just Like That. How adorable. Yep. She's probably the biggest star of the group. And all she does is sit there with her tongue hanging out. (laughs) <laughs> hey, when you look like that, that's all you need to do, right? Yes. Yep. And working with Kristen Davis. And she her family. Loved yeah. the bulldog. She was always making sure her co-star got her breaks and that she was comfortable. And so it was a lot of fun to work on that set. When I see the English bulldog with the tongue hanging out, I just like, oh, fall in love. And I know that Kristen Davis is a huge animal advocate. So congratulations for all the work. And I'm sure in the next month or two, all these projects will get back on track and you'll be busy as ever, which is great for you. And I'm just so happy to have you here today sharing these wonderful memories about someone that we loved so much. And when we come back, we're going to catch up. It's a different type of show today because we're going to catch up with a shelter director, one of the best and most respected in the business, Scott Howe, who runs ARF, Animal Rescue Fund of the Hamptons, beloved out here by a lot of celebrities too, who have gotten their wonderful pets from them. And Scott and his wonderful organization, when I called them up, agreed to do something that is truly groundbreaking, never done before. And you'll hear all about it in detail when we come back. Take a bite out of your competition. Advertise your business with an ad in Pet Life Radio podcasts and radio shows. There is no other pet-related media that is as large and reaches more pet parents and pet lovers than Pet Life Radio. With over 7 million monthly listeners, Pet Life Radio podcasts are available on all major podcast platforms. And our live radio stream goes out to over 250 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, Odyssey, TuneIn, Stitcher, and other streaming apps. For more information on how you can advertise on the number one pet podcast and radio network, visit PetLifeRadio.com slash advertise today. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Pet Welcome back to Rappaport to the Rescue. I'm Joe Rappaport, and I am so excited to tell you all about an initiative that's never been done. Unbelievable. Thanks to the executive director from ARF, Animal Rescue Fund of the Hamptons, one of the most beloved shelters in the country, and certainly in the Hamptons. Scott, I cannot thank you enough. Scott Howe, who agreed to do the most incredible thing for seniors in honor of Betty White. I talked about it earlier, but ARF is going to, are you ready? Waive all adoption fees for every senior in their shelter. And we're talking dogs and cats for 100 days. That's over three and a half months. Scott, you are my hero. I cannot (sighs) thank you enough. And I know Betty is up there smiling from heaven. Oh, Jill, thanks so much. Jill, you inspire us. And uh, just Betty White was to all of us at, at all stages in our lives and for so many generations. She touched us through her work, but also through her advocacy. And I think uh, so many people know Betty White for her love of animals. And we were all moved by her death. And, you know, at our, we're proud of all our adoptions, but senior animals really pull at my heart because these animals, these are animals that knew life in a home. 
And I was looking at the list of, of seniors in ARF's care, and all of them came to ARF really because of unexpected life events in the lives of their, of their human companions through no fault of their own. And as I think about them, you know, I have the same fears I would have for my own pets. What would happen to my pets if I were to be in an accident or if for whatever reason, I weren't able to care for them? But we all know these pets need more attention. They need, in order to get adopted, everyone falls in love instinctively with puppies and kittens, um, but seniors get overlooked. And I think that's because we're afraid of losing our pet. Again, we're afraid of the loss and we think of older pets and we think of how Less many time. years do they? Yeah. And we all know that losing a pet is just devastating. Oh, the worst. But oh my gosh, when you think about the love these animals still have left to give, eight years old or older, you know, an eight year old cat can still live for another eight years. Yeah. Um, easily. Easily with great vet care, you know, an eight year old dog living to 12, 13, 14 for larger breeds, that's not unheard of at all. Right. My a senior, when I adopted one a little older, she lived till 20. Okay. Now I know that's rare, but <laughs> even Petey, my 120 no. pound bulldog, I got him at three and they're telling me maybe you'll have six years if you're lucky. I just lost him at 16. I'm not saying that we could be that lucky where every animal will thrive that long, but I do believe when you rescue a senior and they know they've been saved, they thrive. And I've talked to so many people about this, Scott, that these animals end up surprising us when we take them in in the twilight of their lives. Jill, you're so right. And so, you know, what's great about this campaign and why it's important, I think we're doing it not just one day, we're doing it right. for a hundred days is because senior pets, we want the adoptions to be right. We want people to have time to meet the animals. Sometimes they may have medical needs. It may take a little while to make a decision. We also know that in the pandemic, it's made adoption appointments and travel and all sorts of things really fraught. So we didn't want to put an arbitrary deadline to this. And we wanted to use it, you know, not just as a single day promotion, but as a way to shine a spotlight on senior pets at our and really in shelters across the country. Well, I have to tell you, Scott, I really think just from word of mouth, I've already heard back from two shelters that want to follow your lead. And right before we started this interview, you know, we got an incredible quote from Matt Bershatker, the CEO of the ASPCA, the largest animal welfare organization in the United States, supporting and really cheering us on with this initiative. You're really on to something here. And I think this is going to start a whole new thing that hopefully we can do every year. And, you know, our listeners, they need to understand like adoption fees. We're not talking $20 here, $40. What is an adoption fee for a senior dog or cat? Our adult dogs are $200 and senior adult cats are 75. But all of these animals come, at least at ARF, with complete medical history. And they've had really excellent care so that, you know, we don't want there to be hurdles for the animals succeeding in the home. But yeah, we don't want to let a fee stand in the way of these animals finding a home. And, and frankly, we'd rather have that fee go towards the animal's care and for getting it set up and buying a new bed and buying food and, and all of those things. But that's a lot of money that you're potentially waiving. And it yep. just speaks volumes about you and your shelter, oh. your board. I mean, really, it's incredible. When I've told people and I'm trying to, you know, let them know before the big news breaks, but everyone goes, wait, did you just say 100 days and I'm like, yeah, I mean, three and a half months, people have to process that. And I said, of course, because Betty White would have been 100 on January 17th. And Scott, for people that aren't in the know, what is a senior dog's age? When are they really considered a senior? We in our shelter start at eight years old. For the big dogs? For both cats and dogs. Okay. We start at eight. But you're right, for a smaller dog, eight's relatively young. But every case is different. So rather than try to make a determination on an animal by animal basis, ARF has, has set our guidelines at, at eight years old. We're calling them seniors. So on our website, we have a special page for this. We're showing all of our current available animals who are eight years old or older. And I got to meet one of those sweethearts. In fact, she was our campaign canine for my initiative, 
with Sundays for dogs food. And that's beautiful Monica, a nine-year-old, beautiful girl. And I'll tell you something. I spent, I'd say a half hour, 45 minutes. We were trying to get the perfect photo. But what I want people to understand is this was a big, you know, active, sweet dog. And she's meeting me for the first time. Then say maybe two minutes, I had my arms around her. She was nuzzling under my chin. And she's been waiting for five years with a wagging tail for a forever home. And she's also going to be the face of this 100 day senior adoption extravaganza that you're doing, right? Right, right. Monica is going to be our booster for this. And she's just uh, another example of a sweet dog who has ended up in a shelter through no fault of her own. And we hope that the attention this campaign brings will help the right people see her and fall in love. Well, Scott, you know how I feel about you. Just to be able to work with you on something so important and hopefully will be life-saving and groundbreaking is an honor for me. And for everyone listening who would, we hope, we pray, has an interest and wants to adopt a senior. Scott, tell us how people can reach you, how they can find you. Thanks, Jill. They need to go to our website, arfhamptons.org. That's arfhamptons.org. All of our animals available for adoption are on our website, including our seniors for the Betty White Challenge. And you can fill out an application online to get the process started and then um, schedule the time to come in or come in person for adoptions. If you're in the Hamptons and come to our adoption site in Sagaponic, we're there Thursday, Friday, Saturdays and Sundays. So we hope to see these seniors in homes in the next hundred days. And Jill, thank you so much for bringing attention to all the great work going on in shelters across the country, and especially to those seniors who need and deserve homes and love. Well, I couldn't have done it without you. And you and your shelter are the first to kick this off. And there's something to be said for starting something. So bless your heart. I am so excited. And we're going to be updating people as time goes on. We want to keep this going in terms of letting people know which dogs got a home and following their stories. And we're kicking it off today here. If I had my imaginary bottle of champagne, I'm toasting to you and good luck to all of us. Right, Scott? We're so right. excited about this. Thank you again. Yeah. Here's to a great hundred days. Amen. Thank you, Scott Howe, Executive Director from ARF. We're kicking off this unbelievable Betty White Initiative, all seniors, starting today, January 17th, for 100 days, all fees, and see my dogs are saying right on, right on. Uh, right on. All fees will be waived for the seniors. I love how all my dogs are chiming in now. On that loud note, that is it for a wonderful edition of Rappaport to the Rescue and Betty White. We love you. We miss you. Happy 100. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.